Get out the insurance cards, get out the co-pays. The office is open, my friends. Brought to you by DrRoto.com. What is up? Welcome in to another special off-season edition. We are the one and done show. We are your fast break of college basketball information. I am your host, Eric Romov. You can catch me on those Twitter streets at Fantasy Nav. And he is the captain of our ship. He is recovering from a absolutely hectic NBA draft, watching some of our favorite names come off the board. MC Holland34 over on Twitter, Mr. Mike Holland. Mike, how is it going today? Hey, it's going good, man. Uh, yeah, just a lot of NBA draft stuff covering a lot of the players that uh, we covered a ton of last year in DFS. Uh, so it's kind of cool to see some of the names come off the board. Um, you know, the accuracy wasn't quite there. I think we were a pick off when we did our show. seems like every guy would go uh, just one ahead or one before where we had him. And I'm still trying to figure out what the Spurs were doing. Uh, but, you know, that's for another show. But, uh, yeah, doing good. Just been working on some, you know, college basketball content. Uh, you know, we're counting down our top 20 players that are returning. Um, our guy, Jay Heinrich, is helping out, uh, you know, getting those out there. So I'm um, counting those guys down as we get uh, you know, through the off season here. And then just working on a piece uh, right now uh, just on the Big East. So um, a lot to cover in, in that conference as we've done so far this off season. Uh, but, yeah, uh, outside of that, just been doing good, man, and looking forward to today's show. Uh, you know, we got uh, the uh, ACC back on deck here. Uh, but the journalist here covering the Miami Hurricanes since 2003, a co-owner of the InsideTheU.com with 24-7 Sports. We have Christopher Stock here to talk a little Hurricanes basketball. Christopher, how are you today? Good, Mike. How are you guys doing? Doing good. We're, doing good, my friend. Yeah, we're, we're doing great, and we are absolutely pumped to double-click on, on this Canes program. It's certainly been uh, a program on the rise and a point of intrigue over the course of, of this off season. So I want to start with coach Laraniega um, and the job that he's done with this program, right? Last year, hurricanes back into the 20 win category, back into the NCAA tournament after a couple year hiatus uh, and made it all the way to an elite eight. So one of our favorite picks as we were filling out our brackets last year. And I want to know off the top from you, Christopher, what's, what's the overall sense around this program? How much confidence is there? Um, you know, what has really brought this team back to the level that we saw last year? You know, people got excited late in the year. You know, a lot of the time, you know, th this was a team that didn't have a lot of high expectations going into the year. And I think it took a little bit of time for the fan base to jump on board. You know, was this team for real? Miami had not been very good those previous three years, missing the tournament after a three-year run. And look, they had really good guards. And, and you guys know when you follow college basketball, when you have good guards, you know, high level guards, it gives you a chance in the postseason. And Miami stuck to what they were. You know, both of those guys with Isaiah Wong and Cameron Mcgusty, and obviously Charlie Moore running the point did a great job in, in the tournament. And now they've got three starters to replace in the offseason. And people are still excited about, you know, what this team can be. There's some excitement with the newcomers coming in, two big transfers that should make an immediate impact. So the hope is Miami can get back to the NCAA tournament and be a top half team in the ACC, but certainly there's a lot of excitement, some renewed energy around the program that this program does have a chance to be good once again. Yeah, we say it time and time again, every time the NCAA tournament comes, you get the guard play right and you have a chance every you know, every game to take one down. So definitely saw that with that three guard attack they had last year. I uh, want to start here with a huge story. Um, obviously that the Miami program is involved with here, centering the NIL deals, Nigel Pack, returning guard Isaiah Wong, you know, CNS, CNN SI reported a few weeks ago, uh, the NCAA visited the school and what's believed to be uh, the first serious NIL inquiry. So what can you tell us about this inquiry, the role of LifeWallet CEO John Ruiz, and how do you see all this playing out? Well, I think it's just a basic formality, trying to get some information. But as far as we know, nothing's going to change. You know, Miami's still going to be heavily involved with NIL, as we've seen from the football side. And it just became national news with what was going on with basketball. You touched on Nigel Pack, the information coming out as soon as he was released. I know that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, but – this is the era that we're in. This is just the reality of what's going on in college basketball. I think people might look at a Miami on the basketball side of it, that this, is a, this isn't a powerhouse. This isn't a, a blue blood program. This is a program that essentially isn't supposed to make these deep runs and, and be good and get good players. And I think a lot of people are adjusting to that or maybe we'll have to adjust to it moving forward. But we touched on the Elite Eight appearance. That was the Miami's long, uh, the longest, the deepest run they've ever had. So when you touch on you know transfers coming in, the excitement, you touched on Coach Laranega. He's certainly built a quality program, competing for NCAA tournament appearances 
left and right. And as far as NIL, Miami's going to be a player in it as the best they can, you know, and certainly there's other programs with more prestige with its program, more success of its program, but Miami's going to do everything they can kind of year after year to, to get transfers in, which they've done in the past. They're just kind of adding this NIL element into it, but I don't, as far as a, anything coming down on them. There's no reason to think that there's going to be any issues for them moving forward unless the NCAA makes a like wide sweeping rule changes across the board. But until then it's, you know, moving on to the next. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard not to play by the rules when there really aren't any rules out there. Right. And Mike and I spent plenty of time talking over the course of the off season that, you know, just, just given the, um, you know, the namesake of, of this program, it felt like Miami was probably going to be the first one to catch scrutiny. It seems like the NCAA always likes to to go and, and kick around on, on that campus. So not entirely surprised, but tend to agree that um, this will probably end up being a whole lot of nothing because there's not really any guidelines to, to be violated. So uh, you, you mentioned Pac and the announcement of his NIL deal uh, shortly after his, his transfer in. He also came in a lot with uh, came in alongside Omir, two of the biggest names in the portal and on Mike's big board this off season. So I want to specifically look at these new faces. What can you tell us about their game on the court? What will they do? To, what will they need to do to make up for the loss of guys like Moore, like McGusty, like Sam Wardenberg? These guys are certainly different players. We'll start with the, the backcourt and Nigel Pack. I got a chance to watch him quite a bit over his first two years at K-State there. Really good shooter. You know, that's what stands out. He's over a 40% career three-point shooter. So he's going to bring that element to it where he's going to knock down threes. I think he's going to play off the ball really well with Isaiah. If Isaiah's, you know, going to the basket, kicking to him a little bit, he's not the biggest guard, but he is going to be their point guard in a sense where that's why he's coming to Miami, kind of just get the ball in his hands a little bit more than he had at K-State from a ball handling perspective. But this guy shot the lights out. Over 45% from field goal percent last year, 17 a game. He's done it at the Power 5 conference level. And I, I think he's going to trans, translate and transition very well to Miami. I think they're going to get the most out of him. And I, again, at the very least, he should be able to shoot three, knock down threes. And anytime you have that, it's certainly a positive. And, you know, just big picture for Miami to get these two guys in who are going to project as starters from day one, it really gives Miami a chance to see what they have in terms of maybe that fifth spot which we can get into a little bit more of who's going to start there or get the most minutes. But that's why Miami has a ch chance to have a good team is because they have two proven guys coming in. And certainly with North Chad O'Meara, it's going to be a little bit of a transition with him. Sunbelt player of the year at Arkansas State, good, strong couple years, a six, seven guy that was one of the national leaders in rebounding uh, both seasons. So he has that element, but it's going to be interesting to see how he makes the transition going against ACC big guys. He's not, again, he's about six, seven, two thirty, two forty. He can get it done inside. But there was a comment that Isaiah made to coach recently over the summer. And it's just that Chad dunks everything. So he's finishing at the rim, you know, he's making shots, but I think it is going to be a little bit more of an adjustment with him because again, making that step up in, in competition, but certainly Miami's slotting these guys in and, and they, they know what they have. They're there right now in the summer working out with the team. And again, you've got those two Jordan Miller returns as a starter, very excited about him in the future. And then Isaiah Wong has been proven the last few years at Miami. So a really good starting point. Miami's definitely has a good shot to have a good team because of these four guys that are proven. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing. As uh, someone that lives down here in Austin, Texas, I was glad to see uh, our guy Nigel Pack uh, head east. So I definitely got to face him a few times. But, uh, you know, you just talked about it. Jordan Miller, uh, Isaiah Wong also coming back. Uh, you know, do you see their roles changing uh, this year? And what do they need to do in particular for this team to have the same kind of success? Yeah, and first off, Mike, if you're in Austin, you know that sometimes the transfers don't always work. You know, Marcus Carr certainly went through his transition. So we will see, even though there, he was proven in the Big Ten, you know, just with Nigel Pack, it will be a transition for him. You know, it's a new team. So, you know, as far as the two other guys, Isaiah Wong, I think, you know, deferred a little bit because Cam McGussey last year was having such a good year. And I think Isaiah is going to get back to that thing that he was doing two years ago, you know, where he's great off the dribble and whether it's one-on-one -on -one ball or whatever it is, that's his biggest strength. He's tough to guard. Uh, he's tough to keep in front of, and he finishes at the rim. He goes hard to the basket, draws foul. I think he's going to be one of those high volume scorers once again in the ACC like he's been, but I think he has a chance to even add more to his game. I wouldn't be surprised if he shot threes even a little bit better than he did last year. That'll probably be the biggest thing that he can, the adjustment. And again, 
it's a lot's going to rely on him uh, this year. You know, McGusty took over last year as the team's best player, but now it goes back to Wong. But with Jordan Miller, I, I, I really liked his game last year. You know, coming into the year after what he was doing at George Mason, I thought analytically he, he looked good. You know, things he brought to the table as a three-point shooter. But what we saw last year, I, th- I think fans should be very excited about him because he had these moments where he'd, he'd burst out for 20-point games. He'd finish at the rim. He was probably the team's best dunker. And, and for a guy that can knock down threes as well, he, he just can do a lot of different things. And I think you're going to see a more well-rounded, more balanced, uh, in a sense, season for him, more consistent with his production. And I think he learned a lot last year, but he did it against the best teams in the ACC and moving forward and down the stretch in some key tournament games. So I think he has a chance to really break out and be even better. And he's key defensively. I, I know Jim Laranega would love to have him the whole time of his college career. I think he values him that much with everything that he can bring to the table. But certainly I think he can take a step in his game and his production. Yeah, both Wong and Miller's stock is is certainly pointing up and in the right direction. For us, we we listed Isaiah Wong as our top 20 player as we were counting down the players for the upcoming season. And for those of you that are uh, tuning in on YouTube, uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. And we want to hear from you in the chat. We want to know among the returning players for this Miami Hurricanes team, who is it that you think steps up the most in the season to come? So definitely looking forward to hearing from all of you on that front. Um, you know, now that we've talked about kind of the the big names associated with the program for next year, it really feels like Miami has what could be a uh, top 20, top 15 core across the entire landscape of college basketball. So, um, you know, that, that four or five guys um, very much so puts them in a competitive space, but they'll need a few more pieces to go along with them. So, you know, whether it is returning guys like, uh, like Poplar or um, some of the incoming four recruits that, Uh, make this a very strong freshman class for Miami. want to know from you, Christopher, you know, who is it that can potentially be an X factor or maybe a guy that's a little bit off the radar that we will uh, come to know over the course of next season? I think that's going to be fascinating to see what Miami does with that fifth spot. Essentially, like I said, all those four other guys should slot right in. You know, I think they can go different ways and that's why it's going to be so interesting. And I wouldn't be surprised to see it rotate, you know, maybe non-conference schedule, Coach Larinaga and his staff kind of decides what kind of team they want to be. I think analytics is going to come into this, you know, five guard lineup stuff that you can see. I, I think a lot of these things is going to play going to play in because these guys bring different things to the table. And Miami last year, so I touched on the guard play for the NCAA tournament last year, and certainly that was strong for Miami. But what they did their best and what you've got to do in the tournament is play to your identity. Miami went small. They, they stuck with that even against some taller teams you know, with Auburn, for example. That was certainly a, a matchup thing, but they stuck to who they were. Miami's going to have to decide if they want to run small again. Essentially, Jordan Miller is going to be one of those key guys at 6'7". Does he play the four or like he did last year, or does he move to the three and they insert a guy like Anthony Walker, who we've seen shown flashes at Miami? Maybe he plays the four and maybe a more traditional 3-4 lineup that's athletic at those spots. You could – you could switch a lot of things. I think that's what one thing you'll see with this team. I think they're going to have the op- opportunity to switch a lot defensively. I know they want to still run that scramble defense that Jim Laranea likes to run, but you touched on Poplar. Yeah, he's a guard, so they could maybe mix him in. That 6'5 wing, A.J. Casey is another guy that plays the four. That If they want to go to that route, they could do that. You know, I'm just looking at the roster. There's another freshman that intrigues me quite a bit. Again, it's going to make a difference on how they want to go, which route they want to go. But Christian Watson out of the D.C. area is one of these six, seven, kind of just this true wing, two-way defense. You know, you can play on defense. You can knock down shots on offense. Gives them some athleticism and size at the wing spot. I think he's one of those intriguing guys that might just be able to fit in a little bit better than the other guys if, you know, if Poplar does not come around that the way you're hoping But I think Watson's one of those intriguing X-Factor type guys, whether, again, maybe it's not to start the season, but maybe moving forward as the season progresses as a freshman. But very intrigued by him. But I think it's going to – it's really going to depend on what style Miami wants to go with and because they got different options with what what they want to do. Yeah, so uh, you look at it and there was a lot of, what, four guard. (laughs) It felt like almost five guard type, five out sets. Um, you know, now that you have more of a traditional big, Omir, you feel like he's going to play 30 to 35 minutes 
do you feel like there's going to be a shift um, in the traditional lineup and offensive sets? Or do you think that Larinaga, you know, after the success of last year, that he's going to want to, you know, get up and down the floor? And, and if he gets beat inside, he kind of gets beat inside and just let the chips fall where they may. Yeah, and, and I think that's kind of college basketball or basketball in general, the way it's going. But even at Omir, maybe he's that, that definitely going to be the five guy. He's Again, he's only 6'7", and when you see him, he's he doesn't look uh, physically imposing with his height. But he's got some bulk to him, you know. And Miami last year was starting to see him Wardenberg, who was about six ten or so, um, you know, different style of player. But you know, my once again, Miami's going to have an opportunity to either play that slot in with that power forward spot. Anthony Walker's a guy that can kind of jump right in, or AJ Casey. They're just going to have different options with what they want to do. I'm not so sure what they want to do, but I even if they want to go big, so to speak, they're not going to be um, rolling out a seven footer starting center. They're bringing in a freshman and, and favorite heir who's got great size, but he's not going to be ready to be one of those heavy 30, 40 minute guys where you can slot Omir down to the four. I don't, I don't see that happening. But w- regardless of who they put out there at that three, four, five kind of combination, I just think that they're going to have an opportunity to switch a lot um, on, on defense. They're going to be able to trap. I think they're going to have some good athleticism. And Coach Larenagan mentioned that with these newcomers, um, all these guys, the six new guys. He said this in an interview that he he noticed the athleticism of the team, and, and I definitely think that he that he's correct in that sense. Where I think that they're going to be able to get out and run a little bit, but also defensively. So, how it all shapes out, I, I don't think that they're going to be an overly big team, but they certainly could kind of go more into that that four spot with, with Walker, and then kind of slide Jordan Miller to more of that natural three, which I think is his best spot. But again, you can kind of make a lot of different changes with with rotations, and it's going to be fascinating. Yeah, it'll it'll definitely be an interesting storyline to watch. Uh, we were talking about it heading into the tournament game against USC, um, and specifically how styles make fights. Right, there are two distinctly different styles of the teams, um, and with with some of these incoming pieces and just how athletic many of them are, should give Coach Larniega a, a, a lot of versatility in uh, how he deploys them. So we'll we'll keep a, a close eye on that. I wanted to zoom out a little bit and look at the ACC as a whole. Obviously, you have uh, many blue chip programs, you know, Duke and UNC, um, you know, seem to be stacking up for another deep tournament rung. Now you look at Notre Dame getting a little bit older. Uh, NC State has added some nice pieces over the course of this offseason. So want to get your your pulse check, uh, at least from the Miami perspective. You know, how do you see this this ACC shaking out uh, as we head into next season? I think one thing like everybody that that follows college basketball should really take a a deep hard look at is what happened last year with the ACC really struggled early in the year in the non-conference schedule and coach Larinaga other coaches talked about this all season long about how many newcomers they had transfers in and it just took some time to adjust but as you saw in the tournament a lot of those teams were successful and, and made runs so I think in general kind of generally speaking I think maybe it's going to take a little bit of time to really identify what the ACC is and how strong they are, but they still got really good coaches. They get high level talented players. It'll just be a matter of how things mesh. But, you know, as far as where Miami fits in on a big picture scale, you know, I I do think on paper, once again, I think they should be a top half team. And when you're a top half team, most years you've got a chance of making the ACC or the NCAA tournament. So in that sense, you know, you touch on NC state, didn't have a great year last year, but they do get some uh, other guys in there. So it'll be interesting to see how they work. Obviously, the transition that Duke is going to be going under um, with, with replacing all their guys that got drafted. And so it'll be interesting. But plenty of talent coming into the ACC, and that's the thing. It's like that every year. You get the high school talent, but now you're seeing these high-level transfers pop in. And um, you don't know I, – I touched on the card thing, but you don't know exactly how transfers are going to work. You know, last year, I think about Wake Forest. I mean, look at Alondis Williams. I don't think anybody knew that he was going to be that kind of impact player transferring in from OU. So – uh, and they certainly will have some adjustments to make with Laravia also leaving for the draft. So it, it's definitely going to be interesting, but these coaches are on point. They definitely know how to run programs. They've been successful. There's a lot of high talented coaches in, in the conference. And I think they're going to be able to figure it out, even if it takes a little bit of time. So I still think it should be, again, you know, plenty of time to see it, but plenty of talent and, and income, newcomers and returners coming back. So it should be another good year for the ACC. Yeah, I definitely think it's going to be a really strong year in the ACC. You don't really see them uh, struggling much in the non-conference, which you never know, right? Uh, following Texas, like you said, I mean, just because you win the transfer portal doesn't mean you're going to win it all. So, uh, yeah, definitely a, a storyline to follow, obviously, every year. But, uh, you know, finally, we're 130 days out or so right around there. Uh, just want to ask in the 305, is the U back? 
Yeah, I think they're back in a contention for contending for an, an NCAA tournament appearance, and that's where this program is. And that's just, you know, that's the expectation, or, or that's kind of the goal. And certainly you want to have good seasons. Last year I touched on the Elite Eight. You know, it's the longest, you know, the deepest run they've ever had. So they won 26 games. And for Miami, you know, that 20 20- win season is certainly good and getting the NCAA tournament is a big thing for Miami. And uh, I touched on those three appearances. That's the longest appearance run that they've had in their program history. So I I know it doesn't seem like it's this big thing and all these other programs have longer, you know, those kind of things, but for Miami making the NCAA tournament, knocking off some top level teams along the way. and, And like last year, it was a fun team to watch because of their identity. And I think that's what Miami can be. They can have one of these identities uh, strong guard play. That's been something we've seen under Laranega since he's been at UM. And I, I think that should continue with Pack and Wong should be two of the top scorers in the ACC doing it different ways in their playing style. But Miami fans should be excited. You know, it's going to be interesting what that fifth spot looks like, but these four guys gives your chance, uh, team a chance to win. And Laranega has proven, you know, his better teams that he's had at Miami are the ones where he can essentially plug and play guys 30 minutes. Now, when it gets to be something where trying to dist- establish exactly who you are and and all these kind of things, I think they kind of that's when they get to be struggling. But you start there, you've got some depth that you can kind of work with. You've got some freshmen that you don't have to rush in right away. Give them five to ten minutes, and I think they'll get the most out of these guys. I do think maybe an adjustment for Miami. They're going to be replacing a longtime assistant coach and Chris Caputo, who got the head coaching job at George Mason. Uh, George Washington, I apologize, but I think that might be a little bit of an adjustment with the staff. But for the most part, uh, they know what they are. They know what they want to be. They've got these four guys to really work with. And when you got got, got a guy like Isaiah Wong, who has proven it, been a proven scorer, that certainly gives you a chance in any game. Yeah, it absolutely does. Christopher Stock, co-owner of InsideTheU.com, if you are not already following him on Twitter, you can do so scrolling along the bottom there inside the U or check out his work at inside the U.com. Also, if you're down in the description, we've got a link to their YouTube channel. Not only is that entire platform absolutely dialed in to this Miami program, but they've built a fantastic community around it. You're not just going there and reading articles. You're interacting with other fans. You're getting insights and information that you can't get anywhere else. And that's exactly what Chris has brought for us here today. So, Chris, thank you for spending some time and getting us up to speed on a very busy offseason. And kudos to you, one of our favorite aspects of all of our guests, throwing a little shade to the Texas Longhorns, one of our favorite pastimes here on the One and Done Show. So, Chris, thank you again for spending some time with us this afternoon. Yeah, no problem, Eric. Yeah, thanks, Mike. I could have done even more if you wanted me to. (laughs) I know we're short on time. That's good enough today. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, all right, Eric, uh, all right, Mike. (laughs) We'll we'll have to have you back for round two to roast the Longhorns a little bit more. And for everyone else out there that's watching, go ahead and do your best Nigel Pack impersonation, and let's get this bread. Thanks for stopping by the office. Get your fantasy prescription by subscribing to the channel and checking out DrRoto.com. And until the next visit, be well and take care.